And now, another exciting episode of As the River Churns. All right, we are live and in person. We are? We are live and in person. <laughs> yes. We are not taped. No. You know, the, the intro says another exciting episode of As the River Church. I think we need to change that. I don't know if, it's, <laughs> I don't know if what's going on right now is exciting I don't know. or not. I'm on the edge of my seat. <laughs> <laughs> but not because of excitement, I'm sure. <laughs> no, he has to go to the bathroom. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, we we might need by. to look at redoing that. We do? I don't know. I, we um, used to be exciting. You don't think we're exciting anymore? I don't know that we are. We tried to, to limit it to once a week so that we could be more exciting. <laughs> we did, which I know everybody is happy for, <laughs> for sure. They only have to put up with us once a week. Once a week, yes. It's a little like a, a preacher with Leviticus. I mean, it's hard yeah. to make Leviticus <laughs> interesting. But we have COVID, which I equate to Leviticus. Yes. Okay. And it's just... Okay. Hard to do. So should it be now another exciting epi episode on <laughs> Leviticus? <laughs> <laughs> As we hear the, the tuners turning off on TVs all across the campus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> well, oh. happy Wednesday afternoon, everyone. Yes. You know, um, you know, we were fortunate this morning. We didn't have any of the really uh, any real ice to speak of or whatever. I think you know, I had true. a little bit of ice on my windshield, and no, I'm sure you all had the same thing. It wasn't too bad this morning coming in. But I've been getting pictures from my sister and brother who live up in Maryland, and they're getting up quite a little bit of snow st snowstorm up there. <laughs> snowstorm. Wow. Snowstorm. Mm -hmm. And I know residents here, probably a lot of them like the snow. But I'm so glad we're not getting I snow. Know. Snow just causes so much it more does. headaches for us. It so. does. And everybody in my family goes, you just are really a snow hater. And I went, <laughs> what's well, another headache in 2020? <laughs> that's true. What's one more? Bring we it on. Just get a, bring it on. Just bring us 24 <laughs> inches of snow, right? I mean, what the heck? We've had everything else. That was like that year. What was it? Was it last year or two years ago where we had the hurricane and we had the snowstorm? We did. And we had, uh, we two got years hit ago. pretty good. Two years ago. <laughs> yes. Two it's hurricanes. going to be a long time before kids are excited about snow days that keep them inside that you're right. and away from school after this year. <laughs> I remember I used to look forward to that. Yeah. It's going to be a snow day. But you yes. know what? There's no snow day for most of them because a lot of them are virtual now, so right. they right. don't get a snow day no. anymore. Uh, no, so they don't. Kind of reverse psychology there, doesn't it? No, that's true. Mm. Okay, on Lisa, we also, my secret, I don't know if it's admirer or not. <laughs> I don't know, but your I, gift I've giver. I've got another trinket from my desk, and it's a huge trinket. The, the pigs are getting bigger. Yes, they are. And this one's got boots on. <laughs> yeah, see that? I don't boots. know if you can see that or not, but it's got boots on. So, so. I, Snow boots, I think. We still haven't figured it out yet. No, we, we don't haven't. know who it is. No, the, the, the bags come like this. They I just... think whoever's doing this should give us a hint. Yeah. On the next bag, if there is one, put a little hint of who you might be. I tried to look to see if there was anything else in the bag or, you know, some sort of a tag or receipt or something, but there's nothing in there. <laughs> so oh. I think Michelle knows who it is and won't tell us, but I don't. No, I don't oh, think she, she does. They, they just hang on the door. So they oh, arrive before okay. she even gets here. Ah. Okay. Yep. All right. Yep. Well, maybe one of these days we'll figure it out, but... Whoever it is, thank you. I'm liking my desk is full of trinkets now. It's kind of nice. It's <laughs> I don't know cool. how much more space you have. I know. Well, there's plenty Not of room. Lisa. There's plenty of room. We can start Not stacking much. it. Maybe okay. that would be good. It'll block the view of me then this way, so that might be good too. Does the ham have any significance, you think? I'm, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows, right? We talked about that the last time I got something. It was like... You know, somebody just being cute or somebody being mean or they, I, we, we decided cute. it's cute. It yes. has to be cute. Because right? it all started after we had the big pig picture right. from the water's edge in here. Yeah. Then it started. One yeah. showed up, then a will, little while later, another one. It, it's related to the pig picture. Okay. Yeah. For sure it is. It is. Okay. <laughs> Lisa. Pig, pigs multiply rather quickly. <laughs> Is that I mean, rabbits? I can't, I can't remember. Rabbits. rabbits. Pigs fly. Remember pigs fly. I think it's rabbits. <laughs> All right, Lisa, oh. trivia question today. Trivia. Oh, Ken, did you turn the, the thing? 
Oh, oh. <laughs> Since we don't have our hourglass, we're going to turn the popcorn. Okay. So I don't know about that one, but the, okay. <laughs> the prize today for the trivia question is two wonderful holiday popcorns. Oh. And it was very funny. Last time after we did the trivia and we had the popcorns, the winner was waiting outside the door with her basket to take the popcorn home with her. That's true. That was cute. <laughs> but she did share it with a lot of people. Did she, she put it in baggies and safely shared it with people. Okay. Nice. Okay. This, this is not the popcorn you string. This is the popcorn you No, this you is the popcorn you eat. <laughs> yep. So what kind is it today, Ken? It is gingerbread oh. made with real butter and dark chocolate sea salt. Oh, dark chocolate Okay, sea salt. sounds good. Yes. Sorry. Okay, All and right, this is go. probably an easy question, so I'm going to make sure to tell you Michelle's number first. So to call, if you have an answer to the, to the question, is 336-389-4103. Yeah, and Lisa, we decided that... Because Michelle's irritated today, we need to go ahead and just make it the first caller instead of trying to have it be, right, Michelle? Oh, now you're irritated. I'm sorry. That was you're my bad. You're a prophet. <laughs> okay, Michelle's been really busy with getting ready for the Children's Home Society yeah, tomorrow she night. She's been doing a great Lots job. Lots of gifts. She's been working with Kathy Hoyt and Kathy's volunteer committee, so she's been really involved in that. So we're yeah. going to do the first caller <laughs> that calls in with the right answer, okay? <laughs> but next week, we might change it up on you a little yeah. bit. Yeah. See, next yeah. week is good. We'll do it like the radio show. We'll, we might do the 20th caller or something Exactly, really fun, but so. not today. Michelle's today, like, oh, God, help me. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first caller today with the right answer, okay? And this one's pretty easy, so. Is it? Just a reminder, the number is 336-389-4103. What country is believed to have come up with the famous Christmas beverage, eggnog? Eggnog. Okay, so where did eggnog originate from? What's, to our best knowledge, where did it orig originate from? What country? I know that. We had it in the dining room last Thursday evening. That originated from River Landing. It had to be that, right? Did they get I extra credit if they tell where rum comes from? <laughs> <laughs> Where did rum come from? Uh, it's a, I don't know, but there's that song about it, rum -a tum tum <laughs> Oh, that's a Christmas song. Yeah, I yeah. think so, yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, I don't know about that one. Okay, <laughs> okay. well, we have a winner We have a winner already. already. We have a winner. I think Michelle tells us that so you all will stop calling her. Yes. I think that's why. And we're not, we didn't take the 20th caller this time. So Boy, just can so you, you know. imagine next week when we do the 20th caller? Woo! Well, Michelle Woo. didn't like that idea. Maybe we won't do 20th. We'll see. 19th, maybe. Not 19th? Yeah, okay. So. She left the room, so Tom, you can say whatever you want now. Okay. Oh, she came back. Oh, she came back. back. Okay. Okay. So we do have a winner. Stop calling. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Let's go over the coronavirus statistics. Yes. Leviticus. Um, Leviticus, yes. yes. <laughs> and I got a lot of Leviticus stuff today. Oh, so, my God. So, <laughs> yeah. So, we, as a matter of fact, we got a... Yeah, prepare yourself. This might be a little bit longer episode today because be. we've got mm. a little video we want to show everybody a little later, too. So uh, let's see, where to start? Where to start? So again, um, this is comparing uh, through the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services uh, dashboard. Um, since last week, we have done 300, almost 375,000 additional tests. So over a seven-day period, that averages out to 54,000 tests a day. They're, they're just cranking out tests like crazy. Unfortunately, we had 41,347 more positive cases out of that 374,000. That's 11%. So yeah. state's mm -hmm. still struggling a little bit with that, but I think all the states are strugg struggling with that right now. This is the one that concerns, that really concerns me. They all concern me, but um, hospitalization went up by 371 over last week. We're at 2,811 currently ho hospitalized. Um, and unfortunately, we lost another 318 North Carolinians um, from this week to last week, or from last week to this week. We're at 5,979 um, deaths due to COVID, unfortunately, in the state. Um, just a couple of things. Let's see. When I looked, um, when I go went back in and looked at the um, the cases per 100,000 residents, um, and then looked at the counties. Um, 
The lowest one was Durham at 489. This is over the last 14 days. Uh, 489 cases per 100,000 residents. Um, Wake was 603. Guilford was 694. Mecklenburg was 779. And get this, Forsyth was 921. Wow. So seeing a spike in Forsyth County over the last 14 days for sure. Um, number of cases in the last 14 days, Durham had 1,572. Forsyth had 3,521. Guilford had 3,729, uh, Wake had 6,700, and Mecklenburg County had 8,648. And total cases since the beginning of uh, COVID, Mecklenburg unfortunately has the most, 53,076, uh, Wake has 36,126, Guilford 20,878, Forsyth 17,224, and Durham 13,066. There are some other counties now that are up over 10,000 cases, but I didn't list all of them. I, I really listed the ones, to me, that are kind of more pertinent and the bigger, the bigger counties in the state. And Tom, I just got a text as you were saying some of the statistics. Yeah. Some of you may have missed some of the statistics. Tom was reviewing some numbers for the state of North Carolina. There was an emergency broadcast that came on as a... It's oh, a bleep kidding. as you were going through some of the statistics, uh, but I've been told by that person that it's done now, okay. and you're, you're good, but folks, they were wondering if they missed anything. And okay, so, so maybe try and summarize. Okay. So um, I was talking about the fact that, let's see, um, the state over the last week has had 11% positive rate based on the numbers. Uh, we've seen um, an extra 371 people now in the hospital on average compared to where we were last week. And unfortunately, we've lost another 318 North Carolinians in the last week. Um, and then I was going over statistics for the cases per 100,000 residents in the last 14 days. And, you know, Guilford's kind of fallen right in the middle, to be honest with you. Um, Forsyth, believe it or not, is the highest at this point at 921 of the five states, uh, I'm sorry, the five counties that we usually talk about. Uh, and Durham is the lowest at 49. We're at 694 here. So, um, you know, I also looked at things from a U.S. standpoint as well. Um, I, don't, I, I don't think I knew this, but um, I didn't know the exact number. 331.9 million in the population in the U.S. Uh, 10.5 10 million population here in North Carolina. And then when I looked at North Carolina as compared to the other states, um, we are 11th out of 50 in the number, to, just in total, bro, um, total number of cases. Um, if you look at it that way. But if you look at the total cases as a percentage of 1 million population, mm -hmm. then we are actually 39th. Mm -hmm. So we're nice and far back on that list, which is good. That's really good to be far back on that list. So all that means is because of our population, even though we have a lot of cases, we have a, a large population, and when, so that percentage is smaller, which is why it puts us back at 39th. And then the other thing, which is good and bad, is that where uh, as far as deaths per state, we uh, per million uh, in population, we're through, we actually came out 38th out of the 50 states. So, you know, again, you know, I don't want any of us to be on that list, but um, it's, it is what it is. And then the last thing I have um, that's just statistical wise before I get into like more into the nursing homes and retirement communities is that um, I also have an update on uh, the total cases that is by uh, age. Ooh. So out of all the to uh, total cases that we've had here in North Carolina, 10% um, of the cases have been aged uh, newborn up to 17. 18 to 24 is 15%. 25 to 49 is 40% mm -hmm. of the cases have come from that age group. 50 to 64 is another 20%, and then 65 and up is 15%. So... Mm -hmm that 25 to 49 captures a lot. And of course, there's a lot of, and it's a little misleading, I think, because 25 to 49 is also, that's 25 years, um, whereas all the other categories, some are six, some are 14, some are whatever, so it's a little well, confusing there. But, right. but still, um, we're seeing it in an age group. And then when we look um, at nursing homes and retirement communities, um, there have been 28,916 total cases in nursing homes and retirement communities out of our total uh, 451,874 total positive cases. That's 6.4%. 
which we keep talking about every week, that, that, that percentage keeps going down. And that's because I think the population in general is just getting more and more of it. Uh, 2,891 of the 5,979 deaths have come from nursing homes and residential, residential care facilities. Uh, unfortunately, we've seen a rise in the number of nursing homes and retirement communities that are, will have an outbreak. It went up 54 from last week. That's mm -hmm. a big increase. We're 481 um, over what we were last week. Uh, over what we were last week. And then the last couple statistics, and I'm going to be done, is um, for North Carolina. Uh, out of all the cases so far, 53% are female, 47% are male. Um, Guilford is still a red county at this point. We are considered a red county. And it's not necessarily because of our percentage, believe it or not, of positives. We're, um, we're a red county because of the hospital impact right now. We have a lot of people in the hospital um, in our area and so that, um, due to COVID. And so that has put us into that higher red category. Last one I have, um, which I thought was interesting um, and maybe not surprising, but two in every three new COVID hospital admits are 60 and above. So, so when the hospitals are filling up, it's not filling up with the, the, 40, uh, the, the 25 to 49 range or whatever that one was. It's, it's, it's filling up two of every three is, are 60 and above. So. Now, we know it just hits that age group harder, um, and um, that's, that's not good. So, unfortunately, the statistics aren't great. Um, and, we, you know, Lisa, when we heard the governor yesterday, we thought, here we go. He's going right. to change it right. and mm -hmm. put us in more restrictions. And, you know, I guess, fortunately, he did not do that, um, which is good. Because we, we were ready for the other shoe to drop mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. yesterday. Uh, but he has not done that. Um, so, okay. Um, just another statistic that I thought was good. This actually was shared to us by a resident. <laughs> it's a good statistic, but it's it's kind of a, how would you say it? It's kind of like a... a sobering one almost. Sobering, I mean, yeah. Was, that's yeah, the best way to say it. Yeah. This was as of last week. The U.S. had, the US had 296,715 COVID deaths as of last week. Greensboro's population is 296,710. So can we imagine losing the entire city of Greensboro? That's what that's like. Right, mm -hmm. right. I mean, that's really... When you think of it like that, it really brings it even closer to home and really puts it in perspective it, of how it, many people. It does. Yeah. It does. Yeah. So, Lisa, we, had, we did our testing mm -hmm. last week. Um, we were very happy to see that um, we had no new residents that tested positive in healthcare. Mm -hmm. We had no new, new staff, staff members, members that tested right. positive. So, and that's kind of the two weeks after Thanksgiving, too. That it is. So we expected, I expected last yeah, week that if we absolutely. were going to see anything, it would have been last week. But, yep. but you know, we're, we're, getting, we're still getting things with the potential of, staff member whose spouse works right, somewhere where right, somebody else right. got it and you know the yep. you know those, those kind mm -hmm. of second third fourth mm -hmm. degree type things mm -hmm. that are coming up that we've got to deal with residents and staff for that matter yep. as we know that's right and Guilford County is because Guilford County is, is right at that 10 percent mark we um, we're having to switch to doing twice a week testing now in our health care center so uh, we'll see we're, we're floating right around that 10 percent mm -hmm. rate so and that 10 percent when we get to that 10% threshold, we have to do twice a week. Right, right. If it's less than 10%, we can just have to test once a week. So, so this week, I, I believe it's Tuesday and Thursday. I that think that's correct. So we did the testing yesterday. We should find out about that either late tonight or tomorrow morning, and then we'll probably then be doing test the testing again. again. So, yeah. Yeah. so we'll see how that goes. Mm. So um, let's switch to some good news. Um, and not that that was bad news, because we mm -hmm. have not had any new positives, so that's right, really good. Right. Um, you know, the vaccine, um, I, you know, I'm sure you all are following us as much as we are. Um, you know, an update from our end, uh, we have been in contact. I mentioned this last week, but we have been in further contact with CVS. CVS is going to be the one coming in to do the shock clinic, the vaccine clinic. We're still not 100% sure whether or not it's going to be just skilled nursing and assisted living residents and staff. We, we keep hearing that that's only going to be them, but we're trying our best to get the independent living residents and staff included into that. So 
I don't know yet if we're going to be successful at that in, in the first phase or not. But um, Lisa, we, um, we're getting close enough to it that we're going to probably start asking for some information mm -hmm. from residents who are going to get the vaccine because we're going to need to be able to we have to get some insurance information right. we need some right. other things like yep. that so we're not asking you yet to kind of give us that but you might want to start thinking about right. that we're going to need insurance information i don't know what else they're going to need yep. at this we'll point, actually so. need to get copies of the front and backs of your cards yeah. and it's not just your medicare card or your medicare replacement card it's also your prescription card so some folks don't have just one card yeah. they have um, their insurance card, and then they have a supplemental uh, drug card as well. So just start getting all that information together. And we probably took all that information when you moved in here, but a lot of folks change insurance throughout the year. You can actually change once a year. Yeah. Um, you can change your benefits on that. So we'll be asking for, for new copies of cards, front and backs, um, your demographic information, things like that. So there'll be a form that has to get completed um, that we will give to CVS when they come here, yeah. and they'll verify your information, all of that. But there's a lot of stuff we need to do up front. Yeah. So just, just know we might not have a whole lot of time either. Once we get it, no, they may say we, we might have. We to need like, this done in a week. Yeah. Or that, we we just don't know. We, so we don't have a clue start yet. thinking of these kind of things when we put out that that form and need that information. We're going to need it pretty quickly. Yeah. So just exactly. be thinking of it and be ready. Yeah. So as soon as, when we have more information, we'll, right. we'll tell you when we're ready to kind of yep. flip the switch on that and go. But, you know, we're going to have to load all that information up to the, into their portal, portal that they've created for us. Right. And we can't do that yet. Right. Um, you know, we haven't even asked yet how many residents are planning to get vaccinated. Right. I think our thought is that we're going to have a pretty high number. <laughs> um, and so, um, you know, which is what we hope and expect. Sure. Um, but we are going to be doing some education coming out. We've got some tools and some, um, um, some material that we can um, share with uh, mm -hmm. residents mm -hmm. and, and, and the staff as well. Yep. Um, and so we're getting really close. As a matter of fact, I think we're going to start sharing some of that even as early as tonight and tomorrow right, with right. the staff and, uh, and the residents. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, for the residents, I think we're going to go ahead and show a video um, before we show it. Let me just kind of talk through it for a second. So um, we got wind of this video that was done by um, one of the long-term care associations um, like we have here in North Carolina. It's Leading Age North Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, this is, I think, Leading Age Iowa that put out this video. Um, and we're going to share it with you. And, and so you might want to sit back and, and, and watch this, but it's about 12 or 13 minutes long, but it is a great, great video that um, uh, talks about some of the questions I think that most people mm -hmm. are most concerned about mm -hmm. with, in regards to the vaccine. So I think you're going to get a lot of your questions answered by just watching this video, um, and it's really well done. So we're going to pause here with the show, and we're going to do our best to have Michelle go ahead and play the video, and then we'll come back right after the video. So. Uh, sit tight and enjoy. Hi, everybody. My name is Brent Willett. I'm the Iowa Healthcare Association President and CEO. Uh, we are a statewide association that represents facilities. Uh, like your own to make okay. uh, sure that you are receiving the resources and the information necessary to do your job on the floor in your in your facility. Um, we've got a couple guests in a quick video today to talk about the COVID-19 vaccine. Um, and, and two of our, our, our most knowledgeable um, medical directors in the state are, are with us. Um, Dr. Sam Stanton um, is ABCM's corporate medical director. Uh, he's been there for five years as well as an independent medical director for four other facilities around the state. Um, in his role, Dr. Stanton coaches healthcare leaders how to do QAP PIPs, which change culture, improve morale, and increase profitability simultaneously. He also maintains a solo medical practice in post-acute uh, settings. We've also got Dr. Cleet Younger. Cleet uh, is a family medicine physician practicing in Cedar Rapids for Unity Point Health. Um, he completed his medical training at the University of Iowa, so go Hawks. 
Currently seeing patients in an outpatient clinic. He has been a medical director, uh, is a medical director for seven skilled nursing facilities and oversees a team of four nurse practitioners serving long-term care residents across Cedar Rapids. Uh, he also serves as a hospice uh, medical director for Unity Point in Cedar Rapids. All that's to say these are two of the premier experts um, on long-term care medicine um, in, in our state. So I'm going to get right into this. Uh, Dr. Stanton, I'm going to start with you. How does the COVID-19 uh, vaccine, and we have, a, we have a couple of them coming, but generally speaking, how do these vaccines work? So there's, there's the way that I think about it, there's kind of two ways to conceptualize it. The initial vaccines coming out from Pfizer, the ultra cold vaccine that everybody's worried about logistics, and then the Moderna vaccine, these are both the messenger RNA vaccines. This is kind of a newer way, newer flavor of vaccines. It's not necessarily new um, therapeutics because we have used messenger RNA uh, systems in cancer therapies for a while now. Um, but these new vaccines that are coming out that are, are really uh, are kind of the, the, the initial vaccines to hit the state function by basically mimicking the virus without the virus. So um, messenger RNA is, uh, if you think of a copy machine, if you have the, the, the gene, the genome or the, the RNA base of the virus, there's this big, long kind of uh, phone book of, of information that's kept within that RNA molecule. And the virus basically replicates itself by invading in one of our cells and then creating copies of itself as this messenger RNA to recreate its proteins and reassemble itself. And then it gets out of the cell and go infects lots of other cells. What this does the vaccines do is they take away the whole virus part of it, that outside capsid and all the other parts to it, and it just isolates the code, the, the little tiny part of their RNA that codes for that spiky protein we see on the outside of the virus. If you've seen pictures of, of uh, the coronavirus, it's got this little spike on there that helps it attach and get into cells. So we only give the code for that spike protein. We don't give it for the whole virus, just the spike protein. That gets replicated in our cells, and then it gets distributed out of the cell so that our immune system can see that spike protein without the rest of the virus and say, hey, we don't like that. We don't know what that is. And it trains the body's immune system to respond to that so that when they do see the real virus uh, later on, that it's able to recognize it and kill it. It's important to make note that our body is built off using this messenger RNA system. So the messenger RNA itself is not a foreign uh, mechanism of, uh, of cell function. That is where our bodies are loaded with messenger RNA all the time, and it degrades that very quickly. Two really important points. The messenger RNA is a natural uh, occurring substance, if you will, in our, in our bodies, yes. um, and the vaccine is not a virus that we are injecting. Uh, no, it's it's really it's not even technically an infection. It's yeah. it's really just bringing in this uh, messenger RNA in this little fat drop. Really, yeah, really important for for folks to 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 know those two things. Thank you, Doctor Stanton. Doc, Doctor Younger, um, when I get the vaccine, let's let's assume that 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 I've had a natural infection of COVID nineteen. Um, uh, I've gotten it over the course of the last year. Do I need to get the vaccine? Yes. And the reason for that, and we've actually seen this this year with infections, is that getting an infection doesn't mean that you have persistent immunity. And what vaccines actually do is they can actually create a more robust immune response than the infection itself. We see a lot of variability. 30% of people don't have any symptoms at all of coronavirus, where some people get very ill and some people die. So we see a lot of variability in how, how prominent that infection is and in how it affects your body. So because of that, you can't rely on just the infection itself giving you enough immunity. The vaccine is actually designed to create a more robust immunity so that when you do get exposed to the virus, your immune system can actually react to it better. So an infection alone is not enough. Um, we really need a vaccine to get a better response to it um, and to have a consistent response across our population. The vaccine is going to give you that Cadillac immunity where a natural infection is, is, is a lot more spotty. So thank you, Dr. Uh, younger. Uh, Dr. Stanton, I'm going to go to you. Um, you know, the federal process that was, that was uh, put into place to, to get us to this place where we have vaccines on our doorstep, Operation Warp Speed, um, can you talk about that, concerns from you as a, as a medical doctor about any corners cut or anything that we should be concerned about because of how fast this came together? Yeah, it's a really good question, actually, um, which has caused a lot of consternation and hand-wringing 
um, it's important to understand, I think, a couple things that I talk to our staff and to administrators about. One is, clinically, the science is new science. That was a giant leap forward. This idea of using these messenger RNAs and just putting the message inside a, uh, a basically a little drop of fat so it can get into the body, that was a, a leap to start using vaccines that way. And it builds off of probably a decade of research on coronaviruses that were already ongoing. So a lot of the messenger RNA for spike proteins, a lot of the science that went into that is not necessarily new in the last year. It's building off of coronavirus research at Oxford and other places around the world for many years now. Um, so that's important to understand. Um, the, the warp speed operation was really, as I understand it, was an administrative uh, function. It was really to knock down a lot of the silos that existed between the agencies that give approval and move things through, which anybody that's ever worked, you know, I've worked within the federal government for years. It is really slow to get a lot of things across because you have paperwork sitting on a desk or an email waiting in someone's inbox right. to get to get the committee right. meeting. That really knocked down a lot of those barriers. And so there's a kind of a clinical scientific jump forward as well as an administrative effort and really and, and what's very encouraging to me is a global effort um, across the world by scientists to really contribute to sharing the genome from China and getting a lot of these other things out that normally slows the process of vaccine yeah. development way down. So the science, and I would, and I would science in your view was, was sound. Dr. Younger, go ahead. Yeah, I'd piggyback on that and say a lot of things that are new in medicine are actually done in a silo because there's patent protection and companies are still trying to make a profit off of things. So they do things in their own narrow space and there's not a lot of scrutiny on what's going on. This is a completely different situation. So because we have this collective effort, everybody's got an open book. There's multiple different groups working on this together. So the amount of scrutiny on what is going on with this vaccine development is unlike anything else that we see in healthcare. And that scrutiny and that collective effort of everybody looking at the data together and looking at safety, looking at efficacy, makes a much safer scenario than what we see with almost any other advance in healthcare. Awesome. A couple more really rapid fire questions and, and, and wrap this up. Dr. Younger, I'm going to go to go back to you. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm a, a worker in a, in a, in a long-term care facility. Once I get the vaccine, am I going to still have to wear PPE? Absolutely. Uh, a couple reasons. The message we want to send is we're still promoting safety and we want consistency. There will probably be some people that don't get vaccinated. There are some people the vaccine won't work as well. And until we know how things work when we have large-scale vaccination, we still have to do the fundamental things that we know protect patients. Also, we need to learn more about once we vaccinate a large group, what that's going to be mean as far as protection with the virus. It's still important to protect patients. We know that the PPE, the masks, protect patients better than anything else at this point. And until that's proven otherwise, we need to stick with that. Dr. Sin, really quick, uh, what do we know about short or long-term side effects of the vaccine? Well, it, that's a, it's a very good question. It comes up a lot. The short-term side effects is that largely it's fatigue. Um, the most common side effect I've seen is fatigue or have read about is fatigue. Um, and then uh, just kind of other malaise, usually within 24 hours, uh, but in a lot of people, they don't have that. Typically, the side effects are uh, more harsh after the second shot. It's kind of similar to shingles. You get your uh, second booster shot there. It, that's when you really start to feel exacerbated. But again, there's nothing that's really been severe. And on the point of the long-term side effects, obviously, we can't say right. because we've had the, you know, the vaccine out for a while. But what we can say is that um, the reason why the vaccine uh, side effect uh, the window of two months is used is because most side effects with vaccines are within 30 to 45 days. If you're going to see those, you just don't see these side effects, you know, 10 After years that, down the yeah. road. Yeah, you just don't really see that in these uh, kind of fourth phase uh, observations. And so they set that two month window very deliberately, not because they're trying to cut corners, but because that's how most vaccines that go through the pipeline show their side effects are within that first 30 to 45 days. Last question, and then I'm going to wrap this up. Dr. Younger, um, can you talk about the efficacy? How effective is this vaccine just from a historical perspective? So because of the novel nature of how the vaccine works, the efficacy is excellent. So we're seeing 90 to 95% efficacy. This, this is different than the flu shot, which can be 40 to 60%. We're seeing 90, 95%. That's excellent. That's similar to what we see with polio vaccination, measles vaccination. And those vaccinations were so efficacious 
we don't really see cases of that in the United States because the vaccine works so well. So the efficacy part of this is actually probably the biggest surprise for all of us. And that's actually the thing that's giving us the most hope as far as getting back to normal and getting our patients safe. When we see efficacy that high and so much higher than the flu shot, that makes us all very positive about what the outcome is going to be with this and how quickly this can hopefully get us back to normal and get us back to our safer situation. Thank you, Dr. Younger. Uh, really quick, I'm going to go to each of you. Easy question, but I want I want everybody to see this on the record. Uh, I myself, I, I will not qualify for the vaccine anytime soon, probably mid-2021, but as soon as I qualify for it, I will take the vaccine, so will the rest of my family. Dr. Stanton, will you take the vaccine? Oh, yeah. I'll probably try to make a recording of it for the staff if I can. <laughs> Great idea. Dr. Younger? Yes, absolutely. I can't wait to get that so that we can move forward, take care of our patients, and be protected. Awesome. Thank you, uh, gentlemen, so much. And to our direct care workers, thank you for what you were doing uh, and, and for uh, putting yourself in the position that you're put in to care for the folks uh, during the most challenging year for medical professionals uh, in 100 years. Um, think, uh, think strongly uh, about taking the vaccine. We hope that this uh, video has helped uh, dispel any concerns or rumors that you have. We encourage you to talk with your facility's medical director or your, your director of nursing or your administrator about any concerns that you have. Uh, vaccines are going to start to roll into your facilities in the next couple of weeks, and we're really going to have an opportunity to get back to normal uh, fairly quickly. So thank you for what you're doing. Everybody have a very safe, a very happy holiday season, and thank you for being with us. Thanks. Mic off there. I so, did too. I was yeah. really hoping that they would have uh, the vaccine that goes in the sugar cube like <laughs> polio does. Yeah. I remember that very distinctly. I do too. Yeah. 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 Wow. yeah. But you know, I think to me, you know, I, I was one that I had already decided I was going to get the vaccine. So, um, but I had still had some questions about it. So sure. when I saw this video, I was like, oh my goodness, this really answered a lot of questions for me. And you know, when you hear about experts like this that talk about the vaccine, I think it just gives you a little bit of reassurance about it. And, and the reason to share this with the residents is, as you can see, this was actually made for um, the, the workers that are in long-term care settings in Iowa. Um, and we plan on sharing this with our staff here at River Landing, just like we will with all of our Presbyterian homes. Um, but um, I just thought it answered a lot of generic questions it that is. even residents would have yeah. about this vaccine. And very straightforward, I thought. Very, and very straightforward yeah. about it. And, um, you know, I just think it's very promising, and um, I I'm excited about mm -hmm. it very much so. So, so we're going to put that video, I think, um, uh, have it available on Care Merge mm -hmm. for residents to be able to go back if they want to see it again. Right. Right. I actually watched it twice mm -hmm. because I... I felt like I'd missed a little bit the first time around. I wanted to catch it the second time around, but it's really well done. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we're going to have more information coming out. Um, we got a lot of stuff, like I said, that we're going to be sharing with staff. Um, we got a, a question and answer thing with staff. We might be able to adapt that for residents as well, or maybe just mm -hmm. use it in the format it's in. I, right. Who cares if it has some right. direct questions just sure. for the sure. staff? Um, I think we could it's use still the same similar things. questions. Right. So I think we can have it. It kind of reinforces this video Absolutely. in a lot of ways, in my opinion. So yeah. so we'll really use Care Merge on that. I mean, that's yes. another good reason that. You all need to be on Care Merge. There'll be a tab off to the side that has information about the vaccine, questions and answers, any other short videos, and things like that. So really, you want to get connected with your Care Merge. Um, probably also put in boxes the question and answer uh, format, because we do know some folks yeah. aren't using Care Merge at this point. So we'll do that as well, because we, we think it's that important that you need to have that information. Yeah, and, I, and I'll have an actual letter that's coming from me to the resident, and then I'll do something that will be very similar for the staff so that they can, um, so that you all can kind of see, right. you know, what we're trying to do. But, you know, we've, we've built this toolbox of things, and mm -hmm. I say we, I, I can't take credit mm -hmm. for it. This is our corporate folks um, doing this, which I think right. is great. Yep. So we're just starting to get that toolbox mm -hmm. given to us to be able to use with folks. But I thought I'd start with this video because I just thought mm -hmm. it was, Man, it was just right on target, yep. I thought, yep. and, um, and very reassuring. So um, enough said about that. But do yep. you want to give a quick update on um, yeah, our couple so, of residents yep, that were still? A couple of our residents, um, the positive couple that we had, um, the husband is home, 
Actually, both, both spouses were in the hospital at one point, but now the husband is back home, um, his wife is still in the hospital, and she still needs our prayers. Um, so she is still, still battling with, with COVID um, uh, pretty hard right now, um, respiratory issues and things like that. So please keep her in your prayers. So Lisa, just to clarify, this mm -hmm. is the independent living couple right. that had, um, we think, contracted it during Thanksgiving. They right. were positive. Right. They had quarantined, which yep. we were very happy everything. that they had done yep. that. Yep, absolutely. Um, so there wasn't any other residents at risk at this right. one. Um, right. And so we just ask for prayers for the wife absolutely. of this couple, correct? Yep, yep. yes. Um, our healthcare resident that we've talked about now, it's been ooh, probably a good week and a half, I think, that we've, we've been yeah. talking about She's battling. this person. She's she is battling. battling it. Um, yeah, but definitely needs your prayers. Yeah, so. she's... The respiratory Lord. issues and everything else it, it yeah. kind of attacks everywhere in your yeah. body it, it attacks all your systems yeah um, so just keep her in your prayers as well um, let's see and of course we have several people in modified quarantine right we, now we do so we do. but all those folks are doing well they we, are we don't have any reason to think anything different no so no um, all doing well and thank you all for for following that plan there. We know it's hard. We know doing a modified quarantine is not fun. We get that, but just with community living like this, it's just really important that we, we stand behind that, so. Well, and we have a community that likes to be together. I mean, we it's do. the great thing We do, we I mean, do, absolutely. It, it, Under normal times, we love that. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, our residents like to be around each other. They like to absolutely. visit, they like to do things. And so yep. it's not surprising when we have something like this happen that the, the right. you know, just kind of, right. Yep. There's a lot of arms and fingers that go along with yep. it. And it just, Absolutely. So, I mean, if we were to have this happen again, it might end up being somewhat similar to the same sure. thing. You sure. just have to be, yeah, we have to be careful. Yep, yep. Um, just want to give an update today. We had um, the clinic. We had to close down the clinic today. We did, precautionarily. Which, yep, yep, absolutely. And we did it. We were investigating a potential exposure. Yeah. And this is what we do. So initially, it's, it's easier for us to shut things down to make sure before we reopen that we're good. Um, so I think some, some folks, you know, we're kind of heightened right now. We're yeah. all heightened. Yeah. And what happened? Who was it? All those kind of things. So we did it out of a precautionary measure. So we shut down so we could do a true investigation. And when we investigate, we get everyone involved. So it's not just our corporate team. It's yeah. not just Tom and I and right. Cindy. And um, it's our medical director as well. And yeah. we, in, we involve all parties just to make sure everything's good. Um, so we've investigated. The clinic will open back up tomorrow. Um, we feel very comfortable with what we found out, that it was not what we, what we thought. And we are, we are good to go for tomorrow. But out of precautionary measures, we did shut down today. And that's why. So... We had to investigate. That's right. Yep. Yep. Um, the holiday guidelines and visita vis visitation. Visitation. Some Southern came out there. Yes, it did. Once in a while that happens from a girl from Wisconsin. <laughs> Southern will hit me periodically. So holiday guidelines and visitation questionnaire came out on Monday. Um, I know that was a lot to digest. That was a four-pager, front and back. Um, and the difference, the main difference, I think, between the Thanksgiving and the Christmas visitation guidelines, at Thanksgiving time, we strongly recommended right. modified quarantines after folks came back from seeing families or visiting with families here. Right. This time during Christmas, we are going to require that. So if you're going to be seeing um, your family members or your friends during the holiday times from this Friday, mm -hmm through, I believe, January 3rd of 2021, right. um, we are going to be requiring people to quarantine on that. Um, we are just getting so close to that finish line and we just need to be extra cautious right now. We know during holidays, group gatherings, all those kind of things, it just more potential for exposure. That's right. So, so you all have those guidelines. Um, I'm sure you've read through them several times. It tells you the do's and don'ts under quarantine and all that good stuff. So, and also the new point of it is the holiday visitation questionnaire. So that's asking you on there, your visitor information, where you're going, who's coming in, all those kind of things. So that doesn't take place of still contacting the gatehouse when your visitors are coming in. You still have to do that. 
this just alerts us so we can record all the folks that are coming and going here. Yeah. So that's going to help us be able to manage it a little bit better. You, you can imagine um, Cindy's team actually manages all the quarantines, and there's a lot right now, Tom. There is. There's a lot. So there's a lot to manage with that. So this, this will help, help her team keep up with folks, too, and make sure everyone's doing okay. We like to follow up, make sure there's nobody having any trouble. Yeah, it also lets us know when to start quarantining and, you know, because yeah. it's, that's a long period of time. It's a right. two-week period of time. Right. So if yeah. you're seeing somebody this weekend and that throws you into this modified quarantine, right. we want to be able to have that information on a sheet so we know exactly when you're quarantining. Because exactly. if you're not seeing anybody else yep. after this weekend, then it's two weeks from that point right. and right. We're, we kind of move on. Yeah. Um, but, you know, with it being such a long period of time, it's not a four-day period like we do with Thanksgiving. Right, this is right. a much longer period of time. Takes you through New Year's. So it's pretty so. much a two-week period is what right, it is. Right, right. So, it is. So it's very important that we have this information um, so that we kind of track that and help right. you with right. that then. So. Yep. Absolutely. And it's, Lisa, I think it's fair to say it's a modified quarantine that we're it asking is. for, mm -hmm. not a full quarantine. Yep, yep. So and that's important. We did have a question from that of people were saying, could it ever be a quarantine? And it just depends on the situation sometimes, depends mm -hmm. on what the exposure was and, and all that. So when you report things to Cindy, that's something that she'll go through on a one-on-one -on -one basis, and we just assess that. And then we also get our team together a lot of times and talk through the situation. So um, just be aware of that. There are times that we have to go further than the modified, but we would talk through that with every situation. Yeah, that usually happens when we have we know that they have an exposure to somebody who's positive. A direct exposure. Right. Yes. So, yes. So on the normal, if you're just yep. seeing family member and nobody's um, pos COVID sure. positive or doesn't become COVID positive Absolutely. shortly thereafter, you know, you're just going to be doing the modified Absolutely. quarantine. Absolutely. Yeah. But if we find out there there was someone positive, it's just yeah. a different situation. We then. have to change that. So, then. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly right. Okay. Um, and speaking of Cindy. Yeah. Okay. Cindy's fielding a lot of questions right now and a lot of phone calls. So I just ask that you be patient with her. She's returning all those calls. Some days she'll, she'll have upwards of 50 calls. So it's, it's a lot of calls. It takes time to be it able to It does take time. So yeah. please just be patient with her. She's getting through calls as quickly as possible between her and her team. So um, Cindy and her team, they're the gatekeepers. They are. And they're they're gatekeepers with a lot of information. So. Yeah. And they're doing a great job. They, they are. Yeah. So just hang in there with us. We will for sure get back to you. Cindy has not forgotten you. She will get back to you, I promise. Yes. Okay, so Lisa, some, some more good news. Yeah, so we put out a notice last night. Yes. Um, you know, we all were saddened to see that Amy Rosen had left us, but we are proud of her and Absolutely. You know, wishing her well yep. and her new... Yep. Um, her new hot weather job that she's got down there in, uh, in South Florida. So I, I think she had a bur uh, coat burning party the other day. <laughs> so um, anyway, we're, we're, we're happy for her. But uh, we had started um, the process of looking for a new uh, community relations director um, almost as soon as she let us know that right. she was going to be leaving. And we're very happy that we've hired Betsy Seaton to come yes. in and yes. be our new community relations director. And, um, we have a lot of history with Betsy. We do. We've known uh, her we've, several years we've now. Known, we've known her for almost yep. four years now, yep. and uh, we've grown very fond of Betsy, mm -hmm. and we think she's going to be a fantastic addition to our family here at River yep. Landing. So, Absolutely. You know, in normal scope of things, if it wasn't COVID, we'd probably be doing some sort of meet and greet right. thing with right. everybody, but that's yep. not possible to do that right now. Right, right. So, but um, she'll start on January the 25th, and so we'll... Um, you know, you might want to just stop by and say hi to her mm -hmm. and welcome her to the family when she, she comes in. And so... Yeah. And maybe we could have her on the show. Yeah, we'll do that. That's a Introduce good idea. her that way. Sure. So we can... Maybe that week sure we can you have all... her on the show. Yeah. That's a great way yeah. of doing it. Yeah. So we can do that too. So... Okay. Okay. Um, Employee Appreciation Fund. Um, the video is being worked on right now. It we is. have recorded our staff members receiving their checks last Friday. And now Brian is working on putting the video together so we can play it this Friday, this coming up Friday, and you'll get to see all the happy, excited employees as they were receiving their gifts from you all. So 
once again, thank you for your generosity. It was yes. it was pretty cool right. um, seeing everybody get their yeah, gifts was... and sharing some of the things that that they were going to be purchasing with those gifts. And so it was, it was interesting. We had some of the staff members that were saying it was just a little weird coming in here and not and having the residents and other staff members I in agree. here. It was um, not the same. It was different. It that's was different. For sure, but yes. um, we tried to kind of keep it as normal as possible. Right. And so right. I think you'll enjoy it when it's done. Our, yep. our associate executive producer is going to be working on that, right? <laughs> not the executive executive That's right. Producer, that's right. So. <laughs> oh, so that's planned to broadcast on Friday at 3 o'clock. So, um, Thursday, Friday this week, we have our drive throughs Tomorrow night is the CHS drive through mm -hmm. And then Friday night, of course, is our resident family members and staff drive through So that should be exciting. Um, and thank you once again to everybody that helped with the Children's Home Society. The gifts are all in the back of this room right now. Yeah. We're looking at lots of great gifts, and thank you all for your support on that. And the kids are going to be so excited tomorrow. I know it's, it's different because it's not a party, yeah. but it's still, they're going to be excited um, to be able to enjoy some, some Christmas spirit from River Landing. Yeah. You know, just a, a comment or two about the Friday night drive through um, you know, I, I think we've been pretty vocal about this, but your family members that are coming in, we want and would love for them to come yep. and drive through the community and see the lights and the decorations, and um, uh, we have a gift for them when they actually leave mm -hmm. um, through the gatehouse. But two things. One is they cannot get out of their vehicles, and you cannot be in their vehicles with them. I am right. sorry about that. I know that you all would like to do that, but that is not what this is set up to be. And so they, can't, they, can, they can drive by the apartment building, they can drive by your home and wave if they want to, but they are not to stop, they are not to have conversations with you. And I'm sorry, I know that's hard, yeah. but um, and this was an opportunity just to be able to open up and right. allow f family members to drive through, and so you can wave at them and see right. them. And absolutely. So I think that's really yeah. important. To be in an family. enclosed car with somebody, that's just a higher risk event that you... Mm -hmm. And if the we second thing on. is, yeah, and the second yeah. thing is, if you would make sure your family members know to come in the Lynx Drive entrance, not the front gate, right. to come in the right. Lynx Drive entrance, yep. that would be that's really where it good. Because that's really yep. kind of where we're starting mm -hmm. with, the, with both nights we're having them again. Mm -hmm. So speaking of that, as residents, if you are mm -hmm. going to be out and about between 6 and 8 o'clock tomorrow night or Friday night, Please just go through, come in and go through and, and go out through the, the guard entrance. Don't go out through the Lynx Drive entrance at this point. So, yeah. uh, or come in through the Lynx Drive right, entrance. Right, right. That should be a lot of fun. We're looking yeah, forward to it. It's going to be good. And thank you. We have several volunteers that will be helping us yes, with. a lot of volunteers. Yep. That's great. So thank you for that. Um, let's see. One more thing to mention. We mentioned this a couple weeks ago. One of the scams going around, we've heard more and more of it since our last showing where we talked about this. Social Security will not call you on the phone and tell you your Social Security has been compromised. Okay? All that is is a scam. So do not talk with that person. Just hang up the phone. I know it seems rude to do that, but just be rude. Hang up the phone. Or if they leave you a message to call them back, hang up the phone. Don't, don't call them back. I'm... That is not something you want to get involved with. Right. So we've, we've had right. that happening more and more. So please just be aware of that. Yeah, I've been having to be uh, on the phone with Social Security some recently, and they hardly answer the phone when you call them. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you they won't call you. No, they're <laughs> not true. calling you. No. <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> By the way, fried scam is really nice. Do you ever, ever fry that up and put it on a sandwich? It's really good. <laughs> no, I can't say I've done you that. You put a little salt on it and <laughs> yeah. it's ready to go. Okay. All right, Lisa. Okay, we have a few that was questions. A lot of information. Yeah, let's a few get questions to today. Um, first one I want to visit with friends and family. I know you're discouraging it, but I still am going to do it, is what this person's saying. Can you share safest ways to do this? So on the back of the guidelines that we passed out, we actually had safe, safety tips, that, some recommendations. If you're going to visit, even though we're discouraging it, if you're going to visit with your friends and family, uh, visit outside if possible. I know weather's kind of weird right now, so you never know. Maintain six plus feet from your visitors. Wear your mask at all times. Sanitize hands, so carry it in your car. That, that works out good. 
do not have physical contact with visitors, no hugs, kisses, handshakes. I know that's hard to not do, but please. And another big one, do not have meals with your visitors. And why do we say that? Because you have to take your mask off. You have off. to take your mask off. So that, that's a reason why we really discourage meals outside of here. So that's, that's something that we are also putting down for our safety tips. So is this foolproof? No. no. These are just safety tips. If you're going to do a visit, this will help you lessen your exposure. That's right. Okay? Um, next one. Should I be screening the people I have meals with at River Landing? Yes, you Absolutely. Should. You absolutely want to do that. Yeah. If you know your neighbors are going out all the time or having visitors in, having visitors going out, those kind of things, you may want to decide that's too much of a risk for me. I don't want to take that much exposure on because whatever they've been exposed to, now you will have been exposed to. So a mealtime, it is, to me, I would be asking my friends, where have you been? And I'd focus on, have you been in large groups, large gatherings? Mm -hmm. And have you not been wearing your mask? All those kind of things that, that we talk about, the three W's, really, that's the kind of stuff I would want to know from someone I'm eating with. Even, the, even if it's just River Landing family here, I would want to know. Yeah, and I think it's a, it must be especially true for during the holidays here. Because, Absolutely. You know, yes. we, you're going to want to ask people you're having with, have you been out with family members? Have you had visitors? Um, sure. And our recommendation is not to eat with those folks. And, I'm right. Gonna, right. and they should be quarantining anyway. Right. But we noticed that from Thanksgiving that that wasn't happening right. Um, right. across the board. Right, right. And so this is why we're having the stricter regulations for Christmas right. than we, what we did for Thanksgiving. Yep. Um, but, you know, don't assume that just because you're eating with somebody that they've mm -hmm. been, they haven't been out with family members because right. um, they may have been. Right. And or maybe they misunderstood the guidelines well, and didn't think have. it applied to them. Yeah. So absolutely be asking your friends. Yeah. And no and, one know, should be offended by that. Right now, we all need to look out for our own health, too. Yeah. So. And, you know, we, we've gone out on a limb a little bit by allowing residents to eat in the dining rooms and eat with other residents absolutely. in the dining rooms. But we have said, if you're doing that, you need to protect yourself. We cannot do yep. that for you. Right. So, right. you know, if you're going to eat with other residents in the dining areas, make sure you know who you're eating with. Make Absolutely. sure you understand and ask a couple questions just to sure. make sure you can do it sure. in a nice way. Yep. Um, and just ask. Yep. So, good question. If I have a medical emergency, how can I get a hold of someone at River Landing? So, that was also a good question. Um, I think sometimes we forget about, we, we all have cords in our homes. <laughs> so cord. pull your cord. Um, you may not think it's a serious medical emergency, but if you're questioning it, pull the cord. What's the worst that will happen? We will respond to your home, assess the situation, and decide, okay, you're, you're fine. That, that's okay. Maybe we'll take your blood pressure or, or other vitals. But I'd rather do that than you sit there oh, yeah. and not... Oh, yeah. Not get attention, and you really did need it. So medical and security reasons is why I would use that cord. Absolutely. Okay. okay, last one. I read the visitation guidelines, and it says if you visit with family or friends over the next two weeks that you'll be required to do a 14-day modified quarantine. Does that apply to friends on campus, or are you referring to outside friends that don't live at River Landing? So we're referring to outside friends that don't live at River Landing. But going back to what we just talked about mealtime, it still doesn't hurt for you to know who you're socializing with here on campus yeah. or eating meals with. So, Yeah, you know, I hate to say this, but the worst thing that could happen is that you're having a meal with somebody on campus we find out that they shouldn't have been down there eating with you because they're right. on quarantine. Right. Guess but they what? didn't tell us. We're yep. calling you up and saying you're going to have to right. quarantine now right. because you were eating a meal with somebody who should not have been in the dining room eating. So, right. And we're going to try and do our best. Part of the reason for having the list mm -hmm. is that we're going to be able to tr try to not ha allow those residents into the dining right. areas right. as a as a Catch safety them at reservation backup. times. Exactly. Yes. Yep. As Absolutely. A backup. But the, you can't take that as carte blanche. Right, And right. so that's why we're asking you, ask the question. It's right. okay to say, hey, I'm really not trying to take any real risks. Have mm -hmm. you been with family recently or whatever? And, right. you know, because right. that's a risk that I'm not sure I really want to take. Sure, sure. You know, so 
I Absolutely. think that's very important. But the guidelines were referring to outside The, the guidelines outside really were referring to outside yes. friends. Yes. That's right. Okay. Whew. Ken, do you have anything to add today? <laughs> Oh, Ken, are you going to say something today? Yeah. No, 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 I wasn't going to say that. Do, do you, we'll Ken? Save, we'll save my thing for next, next week. Perfect. Yeah, Perfect. yeah, because it's already after 4 o'clock. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, oh, it's going to be good. I'm going to introduce you to some of my Texas family. Bubba. Oh, oh yeah. Bubba I can't Bob. wait to meet Bubba. Oh, yeah, yeah. That'll be good next week. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I Ken, like that. I'm sorry. We, okay. I, no, no, if no. we had realized we were going to be this late. I we love would've... Leviticus, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we got to get through birthdays. Birthdays. Yes. Monday of this week was Diane Lorber. Tuesday, Marsha Bailey, Sharon Coral, Eleanor McKenna, and Mary Bowman. Wow. Friday, we have Mina Way Stokes, Bob Smith, Alan Campbell. Saturday, we have Peggy Hamlin. None on Sunday. Wow. For staff, Monday, we had Nicole Duncan in nursing, Tiffany Haynes in nursing. Today, we have Rebecca Boggs in nursing. Thursday, we have Carla Flores nursing, and none this weekend. So a little bit later on birthdays this week. Yeah, mm -hmm. all nursing. All so nursing, you know, yes. All the staff yep. nursing. Right, so. Yep. so we know we have a trivia winner. We do. Yes. Okay. So the question was, what country is believed to have come up with the famous Christmas beverage eggnog? The answer is England. As early as 13th century, medieval monks in Britain were known to drink Posset or posset, a warm ale punch with eggs and figs. Over the years, this likely merged with the various milk and wine punches often served at social gatherings. Ah, so, very yeah. cool. Yeah. So the prize today we know is this wonderful popcorn. And the winner is Tom Burleson. Tom Burleson. Tom. Congratulations. Tom. By the way, so. this popcorn goes well with eggnog, I think. Does it? Yeah. I've never tried it, but I think it does. You put that in the eggnog? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I, I don't, don't think so. so. Like no, marshmallows. I don't think, yeah, I don't think so. I don't okay. Think so. <laughs> well, Mr. Burleson may want to try that and then report on it next yeah, week. He might. He okay. Might. Okay. So congratulations. Okay. Rest of this week, like we said, the two drive throughs coming up Thursday, Friday, 6 to 8. Friday, also 3 o'clock, broadcasting the staff members receiving the generous Christmas gifts from you all. So don't miss that. Um, next week, the River Churns is on Tuesday, yes. not Wednesday next week. It's on week. Tuesday next week, that's right. So that's a little change there. Yeah. And, Tom, I think that's, we're down to the last comments. Yeah, so, you know, just a couple of things I think that we wanted to say. First of all, um, you know, you all know I have put out a, a couple of videos here lately, and I'm not going to do one for Christmas. I think I've, I think that the guidelines that we have are strong enough to and pretty clear to kind of, and pretty right. clear to say yeah. what we really want yep. to say. So I'm not going to do a Christmas video, and I'm sure a lot of you are going, hallelujah, praise <laughs> the Lord. But, um, but um, after my last video, I had asked for, um, for residents to kind of understand kind of where they are and um, understand what we're trying to do for, as our protection for the community here and not to... Uh, not to tear off the head of the messengers. And so since that time, a lot of people have reached out to Cindy and expressed an appreciation for her and what she's done because she really had... She's she, usually the messenger. She took, she <laughs> took, the, she took the brunt of it right, um, a right. week ago. And so I want to just say thank you for that because mm -hmm. I really appreciate that because, um, uh, you know, she's been in much better spirits yes, here um, yes. since a lot of residents yep. have been reaching out to her. So yep. thank you for doing that. Mm -hmm. um, while I'm thanking you, I want to also thank you, Lisa and I both want to thank you for the mm -hmm. support that you've been showing us here from an you know, administration standpoint. This is obviously not an easy time for right. us. You know, we don't like doing this any more than you all right, like getting right. this stuff. I can tell you that. I mean, I would, there's 18 million other things I'd rather do mm -hmm. than be worried about COVID stuff. But, you know, just understand that, the, that we're, everything we do is, is to try to, be, to do the best we can for this community and for this family here. And, you know, one last shout out for those that did have and go out during Thanksgiving Day or go out that weekend and visit family members or had fam, family members here and you quarantined afterwards, thank you. Thank you for listening to what we were asking you to do. And it's, I didn't mention it in the video, and I should have mentioned it in the video, the last one I did, but just want to say thank you for following it. And there's a, there's a lot of folks here that are following the rules Absolutely. that we're setting up. Yes. And 
I'm not trying to say that there are people that aren't, but we know there aren't. We know there, um, yeah. And so yeah. I think we can say that, but yeah. um, you know, we're not trying to, to paint a picture here, but I just want to be able to say um, thank you to, for listening to us and helping mm -hmm. us. And mm -hmm. you know, it takes every one of us to make this community safe and right. to keep this family from getting COVID. We've been very blessed here. Um, I, I, I shared a little bit with you that the woes of some of our, one of our sister communities and it's, it's bad. I mean, it's bad. And it's not just our sister community that's having these issues. Uh, you saw the numbers for the number of nursing homes and retirement communities. It, it's growing, growing, growing. And so I don't want us to be one of those, those communities. I don't want us to be in a situation where we have residents that are get really sick or worse, even dying from COVID. So help us protect this community. And that's, the, that's where I think I'm going to end on. Yep. So, so thank you all. Here. Thank you. We love you. We hope you have a great rest of the week, and we'll see you next Tuesday. I'll, actually, I'll see you on Friday because I'm going to be here kind of doing the introduction right. for, the, uh, uh, for the video that we've got for the um, Employee Appreciation Fund. But um, I'll see you Friday, but uh, otherwise we'll see you next Tuesday. We love you.